Most of the time, sharks are depicted as ferocious creatures. Well, to be fair, shark bites are dangerous, and casualties have happened. However, I'm pretty sure most of you had known that there are various kinds of sharks that are, let's just say, looks weird for a shark. There are goblin shark, megamouth shark, frilled shark, bobegong, and even the relatively famous yet unknown like viper dogfish. Another one, which is obvious because it is the title of this video after all, is the pocket shark. Some of you might have heard of this shark before, but I don't see many people talking about it. So, let me bring up the question. What exactly is pocket shark? Pocket shark is, of course, a shark. It's classified in the squaliform as order, which also includes some weird sharks like the rough sharks and sleeper sharks. More specifically, they are classified in the Latidae family, also known as kitefin sharks. All of these sharks are small. Well, relatively that is. And a lot of them are weird. Also relatively that is. Pocket sharks are sharks in the genus Molisquama. And there are two species of pocket sharks. The original pocket shark, Molisquama parini, and Molisquama mississippiensis, the new species. Well, relatively new, at least. There's a lot of relatives in this video, huh? Anyway, we discovered the original pocket shark back in 1979. The specimen was collected from the Nazca submarine reach in the Southeast Pacific Ocean, off the coast of Chile, and the research article was published in 1984. Years later, we discovered another specimen in the Gulf of Mexico. To be precise, that was back in 2010. The discovery itself was made accidentally as a midwater survey of the northern Gulf of Mexico was conducted by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. It was actually done as part of sperm whale research, to be precise, to explore possible fish and invertebrate prey associated with sperm whale aggregation around the area. The preliminary research article was published back in 2015. After some more thorough research on this specimen, it was found to be a new species and finally published back in 2019, being assigned the common name of American pocket shark. And yes, those two are the only specimens we have on this genus. Not species, by the way, specimens. We only got one specimen for each species, and there's only two species. So yeah, we technically don't have enough specimens to make sure what we determine about their taxonomy is true. But it is what it is for now, until we get some more specimens, that is. Oh, by the way, Molisquama means soft scale, because their scales are apparently soft, while Parini is taken from Russian ichthyologist called Nikolai Vasilevich Parin, and Mississippiensis means from Mississippi, in recognition of the vast North American Mississippi River Basin, a biologically and geographically rich region that nurtures Gulf of Mexico fauna and unites diverse culture. I take that straight from the publication, by the way. No paraphrasing as you can see on the screen. The right pectoral fin of the American pocket shark was cut to be used for molecular analysis, and it showed that they are grouped together with Isistius, which is the cookie cutter shark, and the Latias, which is the kite fin shark. Anyway, next. Let's talk about their morphology, but before that... As far as we know, pocket sharks are relatively small. The American pocket shark specimen was only 14.2 cm, but that's an immature male. The original pocket shark specimen was an adult female with around 40 cm length. But of course, because those two are the only specimen we have, we can't exactly be sure about their average size. Well, there's technically no average if each species only has one specimen after all. Oh, by the way, their size doesn't have anything to do with why they are called pocket shark. It's not a pocket-sized shark. They are called pocket shark because they have this pocket gland behind their pectoral fin. They have dark coloration. This and their overall shape makes them somewhat similar to a sperm whale especially when looking at their rounded booboo snout. They have a pair of pectoral fins, two low dorsal fins positioned towards the back, a pair of pelvic fins, and no anal fin. All of these fins don't have spine. It is noted that their scales are smooth among sharks, 
and this is their denticles. The right image is identical of the sharks that you are used to. So yeah, you could probably see why pocket shark scales are said to be smooth. Their nostrils, eyes, and spiracles are all relatively on the same level. Position-wise, I mean. Oh, in case you didn't know, shark spiracles function as water entrance during respiration. They have a somewhat rectangular subterminal mouth, equipped with relatively small teeth. They have five gill slits. And yeah, that's their general morphology. Now, I would like to show you the comparison between the two species. Unfortunately, I couldn't exactly do that simply because, as far as I know, there is no image of the original pocket shark. Even the researchers who published the American pocket shark cannot make a direct comparison between the two specimens because the original specimen is not available. Perhaps because the original specimen was dissected for anatomy analysis, but I'm not sure. What the researcher did was simply compare the American pocket shark specimen to the description published in the original publication. So let's just do that. The relatively easy to spot difference between the two species is the presence of these photophores on the ventral side of the American pocket shark. The original publication did not mention any photophores. So we could assume that the original pocket shark doesn't have these. Another relatively easy to observe difference is the presence of pit organ. This is located posterior to the lower jaw. Notice the circular structure here? Let me show you the illustration instead if that one is not easily noticeable. And here is a closer look to the structure. Oh, I should emphasize the fact that this is putative. We don't exactly know whether this is an actual pit organ or not, but it does resemble a pit organ at least. In case you didn't know, in sharks and rays, pit organ is a tiny mechanosensory organ that can detect water movement and vibration. Moving on, another difference can be found on their teeth. Their upper teeth don't have ridges, while the original pocket shark specimen apparently does. Their lower teeth have weak basal sulcus while the original pocket shark specimen apparently have strong basal sulcus. Sulcus basically means groove, by the way. They also have different number of vertebrae. American pocket shark only has 73 total centra, while the original pocket shark has 83. Centrum is the roundest part of the vertebrae, by the way. Centra is plural. Basically, the American pocket shark have less vertebrae. In case you are wondering how do they get this information, they x-ray the specimen. That's how. And yeah, those are the noticeable diagnostic characters. Perhaps there are more, or perhaps some of these diagnostic characters is not applicable, but because of the limited specimen we have, that's what we get for now. Next, let's talk about their lifestyle, or try to talk about it at least. The original pocket shark specimen was accidentally caught by troll at around 330 meters depth, while the American pocket shark was at around 580 meters depth. However, the bottom depth is around 3038 meters. The fact that pocket sharks are not commonly seen might suggest that they are deep sea fish. That's why many articles assign them as deep sea fish. As you most likely could have imagined, we don't know much about their lifestyle because well, we only found two individuals, each belonging to a different species, and one of them is not even mature yet. What we could do is look at their relatives and formulate some hypotheses. For example, they are thought to fill a similar ecological niche as the cookie cutter shark because they are closely related and they have a relatively similar jaws and dentition. We aren't sure about the function of their pocket gland. But the fact that it has bioluminescent properties, we could hypothesize that it has a similar function as the pouch-like gland of the taillight shark, which is used to emit luminescent fluid. Hence why this illustration was made by the author. We also cannot be sure about their reproduction, not even about their development or sexual dimorphism because, again, only one specimen for each species. Another thing that I would like to talk about is the fact that both species are categorized as least concerned by the IUCN rat list. Some of you might wonder, why are they considered least concerned when all we ever found is one specimen for each species? Well, that's because their habitat is basically untouched by humans in general. 
hence the assessment. Of course, this assessment could change if you get more information on their population. And of course, another specimen would be great to expand our knowledge on them. It would be nice if we could find another one. Even better if we could observe them alive in the wild. All we could do is keep our eyes open, and we'll see if we'll ever get a chance. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, some of the rare and obscure fishes are also categorized as least concerned for the same reason. So yeah, it is not exclusive to the pocket shark. Anyway, enjoy your day.